Welcome to another edition of Porsche Hour, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We can make a trip to New Orleans this week on Horse Center. That's the closest I've been to New Orleans. So let's take wow. a look. One of my favorite cities. As you know, Matt, I love to eat. I, I don't mind to drink. Uh, I like warm weather. I like horses. New Orleans, fairgrounds. Good place to be. And it's a great place to be on Saturday, Matt. Because we have a uh, Kentucky Derby prep, the LeCompte, who's our cover boy this week. Oh, it looks like instant coffee there is our cover boy. We're going to talk LeCompte. We're going to also talk Kentucky Oaks prep uh, points race as well, the Silver Bullet Day, and then the Louisiana Stakes as well for the older males. So it's a busy day here on Horse Center. Big card at Fairgrounds on Saturday. We're looking at the big three. Let's start with the three-year-olds Matt, it's the lecompte and uh, we drew a field of eight and it's led by instant coffee but i think it's a pretty wide open race you want to start from the rail out yeah let's do that brian okay number one is echo again matt and i'm going to switch here to our time form us pace projector and i switched at a good point because if we're talking about echo one we were talking about the speed of the race yeah Absolutely, Brian. Uh, clear on the pace projector. I think it's pretty clear on uh, the past performances also with Echo again, um, who, uh, you know, came out running uh, very impressively at Saratoga uh, to win his, ma his maiden special weight uh, in his debut race. Um, and then... Uh, Trainer Steve Asmussen put him right into stakes races, right onto the Derby Trail in the Iroquois, where uh, he got to the lead and kind of faded badly. A uh, little time to the Springboard Mile out at Remington, where Mr. Asmussen uh, has a big stable and does pretty well. And again, got right to the lead. This time, finished third. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I think this horse is building after a big debut, Matt. Uh, Echo again, of course, uh, as you say, backed out pretty pretty badly in the uh, Iroquois. But uh, he he did have a race in between the Iroquois and the Springboard Mile, which was eventually called a no contest. He looked good uh, in that race, but uh, no contest. So you don't see it on the past performances. And then the Springboard Mile, he was game. He was third. Uh, I think he'll need to take another step forward here. But as the pace projector is showing us here, Matt, it looks like he is the speed of the race. So Echo, again, if he can keep building, maybe he'll uh, start to live up to all that potential he showed early on. Number two is Dennington, uh, an interesting horse for trainer Kenny McPeak. I I'm not sure what to do with him here, Matt, but I do notice that he gets blinkers on. Yeah, I felt the same way. Uh, I'm not sure what to do with the horse he seems like a horse that has some potential. He seems like a horse that we should like a little bit. Um, taking a look back, it did take him four tries to break his maiden, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. <clears throat> and then he went on also to the, the Derby Trail, fifth in the Kentucky Jockey Club, and then third in the smarty jones an improvement always seems to run okay um but another one where i think we're gonna say he's gonna have to need to show a little more to win this race agreed it is worth noting that in that kentucky jockey club he was less than two weeks two lengths beaten by instant coffee the race favorite here number three is bromley it's interesting to me uh, matt that we're seeing paulo lobo on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Paulo Lobo, uh, of course, a South American trainer who we've known with good turf courses generally uh, in America. But now he's got some two-year-olds and uh, some high-priced two-year-olds, including this number three, Bromley, who's undefeated in two starts. Yeah, and I think the answer to, I don't know if that was a question, Brian, about uh, uh, Paulo Lobo showing up on the Kentucky Derby Trail, it's because uh, Bromley and <clears throat> Uh, and Idzos, who is also from Palo Lobo, we'll get to him uh, shortly, 
were both purchased and owned by X by OXO Equine of Larry Best, who over the years, you know, in the last five, six, seven years, has spent a lot of money on yearlings. And now Palo Lobo's got some of those horses, including yeah, yeah. including Bromley. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, Best spends money. And if they're going to Palo Lobo, uh, that means he's got some high-priced horses. Bromley, two for two. Uh, he's won one dirt, one all-weather surface up there at Turfway Park. Uh, both sprints, uh, certainly not stakes horses yet. So uh, a lot to be learned about Bromley, but he's a horse who could show some speed in here. Another interesting horse. There's a bunch of horses that I think could pop up. Another one is Confidence Game, Matt. Uh, he's won a, a few races already in his career. Hasn't got it done yet in stakes company, but he's coming off a nice win at Churchill Downs. Yeah, Brian, and I know you love to talk about pedigrees, so I'll, I'll leave that to you well, to talk about uh, confidence game. Um, yeah, uh, a recent front end allowance winner at uh, Churchill Downs. Yeah, and a well-bred horse to boot, Matt. Uh, he, he's a horse I could see stepping up here. Uh, as we uh, move on in the three-year-old season, but uh, he'll have to get better again than those stakes performances he's turned in. Number five on the list, Matt, we, we'll, we'll start talking about trainer Brad Cox. It's about time we start talking about trainer Brad Cox in any big real race. And uh, it took us uh, five horses to get to one of his. Tappet's Conquest is another well-bred horse, Matt, and another horse coming off a nice win. Yeah, uh, certainly a horse that... Uh, has a lot of potential, a tap it, a really good pedigree. He was second uh, in his debut at Saratoga and then came back to break his maiden, uh, I thought, impressively uh, at Churchill Downs in a race where he uh, pressed the pace. Yeah, and of the horses who have only hit to, started twice, uh, I I'm kind of am looking at uh, this one, Tappet's Conquest. Just a little bit more than Bromley. Both of his races are on dirt. He also has a two-turn race, which came in that maiden win at Churchill Downs. And his debut at Saratoga, where he was second, certainly a good effort to begin his career. Speaking of well-bred horses, Matt, let's talk about the number six. The other OXO equine horse for Paulo Lobo is Itzos. And Itzos is a uh, half-brother to a horse that I just loved, Matt. Yeah, that's for sure a half brother uh, to Rachel Alexandra out of the damn uh, Lotta Kim. And, and going back to uh, confidence game for a second, uh, he's got relations to uh, Rachel's uh, rival Zenyatta. So it's a little interesting uh, uh, sideline in there. Um, <clears throat> it's so, yes, 1.4 million. Larry Best. Uh, uh, shelling out the buckos on that, on this one, broke his maiden on the artificial surface at Turfwood Park. Yeah, Itzos has a similar record to the other Paulo Lobo horse, Bromley, in that they both have been sprinting and they both went from Churchill Downs to uh, Turfway Park. Uh, it took two races for Itzos to break his maiden, but he did it nicely last time at Turfway Park again on an all weather surface, not dirt, but uh, uh, another one who, if he moves forward and has the pedigree to do it, could be a nice horse. Finally, we get to the race favorite, Matt. Lucky number seven, Instant Coffee. Instant Coffee certainly has done nothing wrong in his three starts to date, including a debut win at Saratoga, at the spa, good looking uh, a, a maiden field there he beat. And then last time he became a graded stakes winner when he won the Kentucky Jockey Club over the Churchill Downs surface, which uh, is comparable at least to how races are run to fairgrounds, I think. Yeah, and in, and in between those two races, he was fourth in the Breeders' Futurity, <clears throat> which had a pretty strong field. So that was not a that was a, uh, what I would classify as a good performance. Also, uh, Brad Cox runner <clears throat> from the ownership and connections of Cyberknife from last year. Uh, Gold Square uh, owner Al Gold is seemingly giving more and more horses to Brad Cox to run on the Derby Trail. <clears throat> There's been a lot of talk about 
the Kentucky Jockey Club and the slow time that it produced, slower than Phillies that day. Um, uh, yeah, that's true, but uh, um, uh, it was a nice win. And, you know, looking at his past performances, um, he is only is one of only two graded stakes winners in this field. Yeah, absolutely. He looks like the horse to beat here, Matt. He was both, uh, both of us had him in our Kentucky Derby top 10 rankings last week. So instant coffee, uh, a deserving favorite here. Uh, I do worry about his lack of early pace. And in fact, when he was fourth in that grade one Breeders Futurity at Keeneland, it was only a second career race. Forte won the race. Loggins, uh, another really good two-year-old last year was second. So certainly, uh, uh, nothing to sneeze at that fourth, but he was too far back early. So it'll be interesting if he can be a little bit more involved and uh, be a real force here. But instant coffee, certainly the horse to beat in this mile and the 16th will have comped on Saturday. The last horse on the list, Matt, two fills. Two fills has been around. Uh, he is a two-time stakes winner. Uh, he's been at four different tracks. This will be his fifth different track already. And he's coming off uh, one of several horses who's coming off a nice win at Churchill Downs in his last race. Yeah, and and making a number of starts at different tracks is certainly typical for trainer Larry Ravelli, um, who uh, took two fills to Canterbury Park in Minnesota to get a stakes win in the Shakopee juvenile i don't know i just like the name of that race um but he has come back to get get his third win in a graded stake in the street sense at churchill downs uh and in between there um which gives me a little bit of concern he was seventh in that breeder's futurity that we mentioned i, I kind of have a feeling that that grade three win in the street sense was a. Uh, was a really a big step up and and maybe at the top of street of two fills is uh limits could be could be it was also a sloppy track and that's something to uh keep in mind as we're looking at two fills but still i do like him he's run enough good races he won that minnesota stakes race for what it's worth by nearly 10 lengths and and that british futurity was a very very tough race in a big field so maybe he gets a, a partial pass for that effort, but he looked good in the slop in the street sense last time. So certainly one of the horses to consider here and a pretty wide open. Yeah, we're calling uh, uh, we're calling instant coffee the horse to beat, but uh, it, it looks like a pretty wide open field in the middle comp with plenty of potential winners. I wonder if we'll say the same about the Kentucky Oaks prep map. Let's switch gears and go to the Phillies. We're going to talk uh, Silver Bullet Day. We remember Silver Bullet Day. What a nice Philly she was for trainer Bob Baffert uh, going back uh, uh, probably about a quarter century now, Matt. Boy, we're getting old. But anyway, yeah. we have a seven-horse field in here. I don't think we have the depth that we saw in the LeCompte, but uh, uh, still several interesting Phillies. We got to start with Chop Chop. She's eight to five on the morning line. There's that trainer again, Matt. Brad Cox. Chop Chop was actually the favorite last time out in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, uh, and it, it is an interesting field. Where you, you've got quite a range of horses. We're talking about Chop Chop here, who has been off since uh, a disappointing performance in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile for Brad Cox. I think I like Chop Chop, Chop to some extent going into that race um uh, she had two turf wins early in her career and then went moved to the dirt and ran really well uh to finish second just beaten by a nose in the alcibiades which uh, uh prompted cox to give her a run in the the breeders cup juvenile things didn't go her way things uh, uh you know uh might have gone wrong but she's had some time since november and, and you know is a deserved favor favorite in this race on class alone yeah i think so uh as you mentioned she won her first two starts on the turf including a half a million dollar turf stake at kentucky downs she ran a big big race in the house of the 80s match she was uh beaten just a nose and maybe a little bit unlucky to lose that addition 
uh, of that grade one race at Keeneland because the horse that beat her uh, Wonder Wheel uh, came right back and won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies and Chop Chop might have had the tougher trip in the Aussie Bay 80s. So uh, Chop Chop was, uh, was the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. There was a reason for that. I know she didn't run well. Tough trip, big field, uh, a wide trip there. Um, she is, she's tactical, but she's, uh, might be a little farther back. As you see on the pace projector, they got her, uh, sitting near the back of the field, only had a one Philly early, <clears throat> but Chop Chop's been working well for trainer Brad Cox. He re reportedly really likes the way she's been working and, uh, probably again, just like instant coffee, the horse to beat, she is the class of the field going into the silver bullet day, but we'll see what comes, uh, comes out of it. One of her competitors in here, her main opposition, Matt, is also from the Cox Barn, and that's the Alley's Look. The Alley's Look looks like a talented daughter of Connect. Uh, she didn't get it done in her first two starts, but she's kind of uh, uh, come alive in the last two starts. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, you know, Brad Cox getting her ready for the uh, Kentucky Oaks Trail, um, and recently was second in the untappable which was the prep race at fairgrounds for the silver bullet day yeah she ran into a pretty nice filly that day named pretty mischievous uh she was well back interestingly because in her maiden win a very nice maiden win at churchill downs in her third career start she set the pace and then she fell way, way back in the untappable so it'll be interesting to see if the four the alley's look will be a little closer than she was last time, but a nice rally to be clearly second best in that untappable. And I know a lot of people like the winner, pretty mischievous. Uh, the next horse on the morning line is outside Mount Seven. You see her in the middle of the field there on the pace projector. Uh, her name is Forrest Chimes, and uh, Jason Barkley might have a good one in Forrest Chimes. Uh, Jason Barkley is becoming a trainer. Uh, especially around here in Kentucky that we're getting to know a little better uh, each and every year. He's had some stakes winners. Uh, uh, now we see this filly who is one for one. It came just recently, just three weeks ago at Fairgrounds. I didn't know if she'd come back this quickly, uh, but she is back three weeks after a maiden win, and it was a very good maiden win at Fairgrounds. Oh, yeah, Brian. It was a very good maiden win by seven and a half lengths. Very good. Also, when you take into consideration that they paid only $35,000 for this horse as a yearling. So they got them, you know, regardless at this point, you can say they got themselves a real bargain when uh, uh, Forrest Chimes uh, ran off the screen in her debut. Yeah, and she did it from well back. She she uh, she came from pretty far back. She just inhaled the field and uh, uh, drew off impressively like a good horse. So, again, it'll be interesting to see how close she is early to this early pace in the silver bullet days. Again, we put up that time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. I guess we need to talk about the three because the three is out there. Hey, you, Novano uh, is a, a speedy filly, or at least she showed lots of speed last time. We already talked about the untappable a little bit where the alley's look was able to rally for second but hey you Nivano was the filly that set the pace in there she faded to fourth but she looks like she's on the improved mat and if she is indeed alone on the lead which this pace projector suggests she's one to look at a little bit here as well yeah i guess so speed is always dangerous um fairgrounds racetrack is, is not a, a a track where you know uh, I get particularly interested in horses that have gone to the lead and faded in the past because, you know, you got that big, long stretch run uh, at fairgrounds that they have to deal with. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. And I guess the last fillet like we really need to mention here is Amber Cascade, another horse who looks to be improving. She's getting better with each start. Last time she broke her maiden on the same card as Forge Chimes. Uh, of the two, though, I thought Forrest Chimes was the more impressive of the two. And, of course, that was Forrest Chimes' only career race. Yeah, for trainer Cherie DeVoe, who uh, was an assistant for Chad Brown for a long time, has been out on her own for a few years now, and is, really, is building up quite a stable. I heard her uh, uh, on the radio the other day talking about horses that she has coming up, talented horses, lots of, you know, she's a well-connected uh, young trainer uh, 
uh, at at this point. It is important to note that that maiden special weight victory at fairgrounds came with Lasix, which she will not be able to use in the Silver Bowl day. That's a good point, Matt. Good point on the long stretch at the fairgrounds as well. All right, we've uh, we've looked at two races on this big card, uh, the first big card of 2023. I'm actually kind of excited to handicap and play these horses Saturday in New Orleans at the fairgrounds. I wish I was there, Matt. That would be the that would be the best. But anyway, we're gonna uh, the, the the race in between these Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby preps is a pretty good race for older horses. So we wanted to look on this one as well. Uh, it features the return of a horse that I'm a little bit high on. I got to tell you, Matt. He's on a short list of uh, my uh, thinking of who could be the best older males in the country. I think Zozo's has potential to be very good. We'll see. We'll learn more as he leads the field out of the eight hole in the Louisiana on Saturday. Yeah, one of the uh, lightly raced horses in this field of of veterans, uh, and, and I like to see that in in a number of these horses there. You know, five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old with lots and lots of uh, starts. Zozos is the only four-year-old um, in this field. Brad Cox Barn um, came back uh, and made uh, his uh, debut for this year at the fairgrounds in an allowance, got a victory. And it wasn't only just his, his first start this year. It was his first start since the Kentucky Derby. It's important to note that in Zozos's past performances on the Derby Trail last year, he was second in the Louisiana Derby. Yeah, he also broke his maiden at the fairgrounds as well. So Zozos has some experience for sure over this fairgrounds racetrack. Uh, he, he, let me let me talk about why I like Zozos so much. Uh, there were there were several horses that came out of the Kentucky Derby that didn't uh, didn't run their best. Uh, uh, horses like Taba and uh, uh, Cyberknife, for, uh, Cyberknife for, for instance. Um, the Derby was a tough, tough race with a tough pace. And right after the Derby, Zozos was a horse that I circled where I thought he ran a pretty darn good Derby, even though he finished in the middle of the pack. Uh, part of the pace, a little wide, uh, running well down the stretch, even though he was clearly tiring a little bit. So Zozos was a horse that I wanted to see after the Kentucky Derby. Unfortunately, it didn't happen for seven months or so. But when he returned, he looked very good, as you as you mentioned. Uh, Monning's one of my favorite sires. Zozo's only had five career races. I like all five. That second last year where he set all the pace in the Louisiana Derby at a mile 3 16th, only beaten by Epicenter, I thought was a very good effort, too, for the inexperienced Zozo. So I'm looking forward to Zozo's this year. He moves into stakes company. He moves into graded stakes company here. But on the other hand, Matt, I don't think this is a real strong grade three. It, 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 there's there's several horses to talk about, but besides those, those, but they all look like grade three types before. Maybe we start with the two run classic who on occasion has looked uh, like a horse who could have a lot of talent. Uh, you see the pace projector here, Matt. He is projected to have the early lead and could be a dangerous horse here. Could be, yeah. It's always good when you can get out loose on the lead and relax. Um, I think that pace projector is an indication that um, uh, this horse is going to get out to the lead, but we're not talking about, you know, a speedball kind of uh, horse. We're talking about a field that's, you know, kind of pretty lacking about genuine speed horses. And this is the one who's, you know, most likely to get out there from the barn of Brett Calhoun. He's got three, Brian, three entered in this field. Don't know if they're all going to run or not, but uh, uh, Run Classic uh, is one of them. Yeah, Run Classic is one of them. Run Classic's also one of them that is coming out of the, uh, the recent uh, stakes race in New Orleans. And, and they, they all kind of ran similar races, uh, being close to the lead, part of the pace, making a move, and then fading a little bit. The winner of that race was number five, Happy American. And you'll see him at the far other end of this pace projector because Happy American has no speed. But I think a horse who's run several good races over the years, that was his best race yet as he just zoomed by. And he's a threat to do it again here. 
Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that Tenacious. There's six horses from the Tenacious in this field, including the top three finishers from that prep race uh, uh, that was run at fairgrounds about a uh, month or, or so ago. Um, you mentioned this was the winner of the Tenacious, um, and uh, that was his second race off of a layoff and clearly benefited from uh, having a race under his belt. And yeah. I don't see why uh, he's not going to run well again here. Yeah, if he runs back to that race, certainly a threat in here, Matt. Uh, horses he was running by include horses that we think also have a shot. Forza Dioro is the number seven. Mr. Wireless, the number nine. These are both stakes winners. Forza Dioro uh, looked like an up-and-comer a few years ago in New York. He's had kind of a checkered career as far as uh, getting onto the track, uh, but uh, he made a move in that race before fading late. Mr. Wireless, on the other hand, is a, a, a multiple derby winner, smaller derbies, if you will, but he won a few of them. And uh, Mr. Wireless looks to be running well again. Yeah, in really good form again uh, as a five-year-old. Um, he was second in the Tenacious. He was way on the outside in that race in, from the 11 post. You might be saying, oh, well, he's you know, way on the outside here on the nine post. Well, that's nine, not 11, and I have a feeling we're not going to have all nine go to the gate uh, when the race starts on Saturday. Yeah, I think uh, I think Gentle Soul, for one, is more likely to run on turf if he can get into that turf race, but uh, we'll see what this field looks like. Mr. Weil is certainly one of the threats, as is, I think, Forza Dioro, who could move up after uh, after that race last uh, last time where he did, again, made a move and is still pretty lightly raced on the return trail. If you want a horse with odds, Matt, uh, maybe the number three, Intrepid Heart. Uh, in 2022, he was Jacques Hu, and that's probably a reference that uh, most of the people watching won't get, but Jacques Hu was famous for liking to run second, and Intrepid Heart did it so well last year. Nine races, seven seconds, but he ran a lot of good races to get seven seconds. He gets blinkers on. He's a horse who will rally uh, Louis Saez in the saddle. I think Intrepid Heart might be a horse to play for second, Matt. I don't know. I'm just I'm just guessing on that one. Yeah, it could be. Run a lot of good races. Um, he is a seven-year-old uh, at this point, though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th there's some experienced horses. And then you got Zozos with a little less experience, maybe a little bit more potential. You can tell I'm high on his potential for the Brad Cox barn, Matt. Uh, without further ado, let's get to our top picks. We ran down quickly three nice races at the fairgrounds on Saturday, Matt. We're going to start with you. We're going to start with the Kentucky Derby Trail, the LeCompte. Who's your top pick in the LeCompte? Yeah, Brian, for me, it was hard to go away from uh, Brad Cox uh, in this race as Cox is looking for his third victory uh, in a Kentucky Derby points race. Um, so that meant it was between Instant Coffee and Tappet's Conquest for me. Uh, um, Instant Coffee definitely going to be the favorite. So I leaned a little bit more to ta Tappet's Conquest, hoping that he is ready to make a step forward in this evenly matched field. Yeah, Tappet's Conquest, certainly one of the horses who could uh, be getting good as we uh, really begin this three-year-old Kentucky Derby Trail in earnest, and certainly a horse that I fear in here, as I fear the other Brad Cox Instant Coffee, who that said will be favored. And I agree. I went a different direction, and, and and this might be against a little bit of information that I generally believe in. That Matt gave you earlier. It's not the easiest track in the world to wire a race with that long stretch of fairgrounds, but. I like that speed of Echo again. I like the talent of Echo again. And I think after a bad performance at Churchill Downs in his second career start, he's building up to something. I'm sure he's going to be on the lead, breaking from the rail for trainer Steve Asmussen. I think he's got the talent. And there's just not one horse in here that I think, oh, wow, they're too tough to, for him to hold off. So I'm going to give Echo again a try. Six to one on the morning line. I think he could go a long way, maybe finish first. Or second in the LeCompte as he uh, tries to carry his speed. Let's go to the Phillies, Matt. And again, we're on two different horses here. Uh, I see that you're on that trainer once again. Is that right? 
I'm on Brad Cox again, Brian. Um, he's sort of an irresistible force uh, these days in uh, in big races, but it, it, it's not just Brad Cox, um, Chop Chop, as we talked about earlier, uh, you know, showed so much promise and ran so well uh, getting onto the dirt uh, until the, the, uh, the, the Breeders' Cup race where things just didn't go uh, uh, Chop Chop's way. Um, I think... Uh, uh, Brad Cox is going to have her ready. I think she's got the class in this field. Yeah, great. Chop Chop is the one to be. We both talked about her working well. Uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, I, I think she's better than that. So definitely the horse to beat in here. But I'm going to try to beat her and force charms. I'm forced chimes, excuse me, uh, on the outside in this short field, seventh force field for the Silver Bullet Day. I think she's got real potential. I like her. One of the reasons I like her is because she's clear. She's clearly uh, a, a filly who's run well uh, at two turns at fairgrounds, and she's done it recently. It was her only start, but I liked it enough to think she has a shot to upset the two Brad Cox fillies here. I think Chop Chop's the favorite, and the alley's look is the second choice. In the Louisiana, I don't think we're going to be surprised by my pick, but tell us, tell us a little bit more about your pick in the Louisiana map. Yeah, I am off the Brad Cox bandwagon in the Louisiana as we as I mentioned when we talked about wireless in the race rundown. Um I think Brett Calhoun has this uh 5-year-old uh right back at the top of his game. Um uh I was impressed by that second in the Tenacious. I expect Mr. Wireless to be sitting a nice trip mid pack, and that's a good position to make your run at the fairgrounds. Yeah, and, and I, I'm a little worried about him. I'm a little worried about Happy American, who looked so good last time. Forza de Oro could pop up, run classic, still might be a graded stakes winner. But what do all those horses have in common, Matt? I think they're all grade three types. We've, we've kind of established that. Mr. Wireless is a grade three type. He's not a grade one or grade two type. I think Zozos is a grade one type, and I think we're going to see that. I, I, too, think my top pick will sit a good trip just off the pace in here, and uh, I know he likes fairgrounds, and I'm expecting big things from Zozos, so why wouldn't I pick him? I like the three-to-one morning line. I don't think you're going to get three-to-one on him when they spring the gates on Saturday, but Zozos will be my top pick in the Louisiana. All right, Matt, we covered a lot today. Good work. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. We covered a lot, Brian, but we were only scratching the surface of that 14 race card at Fairgrounds on Saturday. The last four races are uh, all stakes races. I assume there's an all stakes pick four to uh, dabble in. Uh, at, at fairgrounds on Saturday. So enjoy the racing Kentucky Oaks, Kentucky Derby prep races up to the new 20 point level that they've instituted this year. Yeah, that's right. Matt. 20 points on the line for the winner of the Lecompte and the silver bullet day for the Kentucky Oaks. Thanks to all of you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that too. I also want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Thanks to our friend in Louisville, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics and to Timeform US for their pace projectors that we like to use every week here on Horse Center. Folks, next week we'll be talking Pegasus World Cup right here on Horse Center. Have a good weekend. We'll see you then.